Hello, hello, Awesome Soul here, and the brand new update for Robocraft is practically upon us. Or it could be out already, depending on the time you watch this video. If you've been keeping up with the channel, there are things in this update that we have known about for a little while. But there are some other things that are actually pretty unexpected for various reasons, but I will get into those momentarily. First off, let's go into the new features, although I guess technically they're all new, they just section them out into new improvements and then balance changes as well. And of course, there are bugs, but I don't usually read them out. If you would like to read them though, of course, the link to find this article is in the description down below. So yes, the new section, and this brings with it some familiar faces. Helion Impact Crater, as well as Gleese Lake, will be returning to custom games. Or coming to custom games for the first time, but returning to the game overall. Now, it says here, specifically custom games, so I don't believe we will be getting these in the main rotation. If, for example, you go play Battle Arena, you queue up normally for that. And as far as new maps go, that is it. I have speculated in the past that when they said all old maps, they literally meant all of them, and especially the very special seasonal maps as well, but I guess we're not getting those. Hopefully somebody will make enough of a fuss to uh, get them to recognize that the community definitely wants them, or at the very least, I want them. But that's a good question. Do you want the seasonal maps to come back, or could you care less? Anyways, on top of that, the other thing that is returning, or at least to custom mode, is Pit. Now, I have gone through this before, but the quick rundown is it is a free-for-all battle. So, 10v10 free-for-all can now be a thing. Even more goodies for custom games are coming in the form of sliders and toggles. Now, these are only a very small select few. I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot more in the future. Or in fact, I do know that we will be getting more in the future. But for now, we just get a nice little taste. And that taste involves the ability to turn auto health regen on or off. So if you wanted to make a classic style game mode, you could go ahead and turn auto regen off. Of course, auto regen is the feature that lets you regenerate your health if you have not been hit for the past 10 seconds. The other toggle is Capture Segment Memory. So when you're playing Battle Arena and you're capturing a point, you know how they have the three sections on there and then when you fill up one of the sections, that section is now locked? Well, if you turn this toggle off, then as soon as you step off the pad, it will always go down to zero. It's not gonna stop at any of those segments anymore. And the final one is the Damage Multiplier Slider. So you can go all the way down to 10% of the normal damage, or you can go all the way up to 500%, which is a bit ridiculous. In that case, you're probably going to be getting one-shot kills, especially if you have ion distorters. So it's probably meant for more gimmicky game modes rather than anything serious. But still, that kind of freedom is always good. The other thing with the update, we'll be getting a new brawl mode. And the quick rundown of this is you can only use wheels, there are no weapon restrictions, but you need to make your bot 500 CPU or less. It is going to be the pit game mode, so a free-for-all. The number of players will be 10. The map is Helion Impact Crater. And for the first time ever, they will be having weapon energy set amounts. So this is a fixed weapon energy for everyone. And that, of course, is 10 thousand. So if you enter this game mode, you will definitely want to have your bot at exactly 500 CPU, since everyone uses the same weapon energy. Onward to the improvement section. Now, a few videos ago, I talked about the fact that nanos were going to be getting a rework, but they said there wouldn't really be any news until the end of June. And even then, it would most likely be just them talking about it. Well, you can imagine my surprise, and most likely the surprise of pretty much everyone when we got news that the nanos are actually getting a rework in this update and it's certainly something i'll just read it out to you all nanos will now have a proto seeker like aim assist 
Crosshairs will now display a locked message when you have a target. There are now also improved visual effects for all nanos. All nanos, except for the constructor, which is the biggest one, have had their heal values increased. The nano constructor, though, did also get a buff, and it has its energy consumption reduced from about 1200 to 1000, which that part there is pretty good. The power usage on that weapon was a little bit too high. Here's another interesting point. All nanos have had their range increased by almost three times. So they're saying here that is pretty much the Proto Seekers range. And in order to match the new VFX or the visual FX for the new nanos, the base heal and auto heal were changed to match. And they have included a GIF, which I will be playing for you right now. So you might be able to make it out. But what now we have when you're healing is little green crosses rising up from your bot, as well as the old blue light healing thing. The other thing to note here, just like how the Proto Seekers typically work, these new Proto Seeker styled nanos can miss as we see some of the projectiles fly off of the target. So that's fairly interesting, albeit a little bit annoying. Like now it's not exactly up to player skill as to whether or not the projectiles hit or not. So will these new nanos be somewhat ineffective against fast targets or will they still work on them? Now the big thing that I and I'm sure a lot of other people are fairly concerned about with these changes are the return of the drone platoon medic circle jerks. This was a major problem and the simple removal of the automatic lock-on for nanos completely killed drone platoons. Well, for the most part, they're still flying around, but definitely not as prominent as before. But now that they're getting a lock-on and a range increase of nearly three times, this could definitely see the return of those platoons of drones, which I really hope it won't, but chances are it will sadly. Or maybe we're worried over nothing. We're just gonna have to wait and see how the new meta emerges after this update. Speaking of other meta-defining things, we now have a shield rework, although it's not exactly what, well, pretty much anyone thought it would be. So they are completely removing the shield value. Yes, you heard me right. They are removing the shield from the shields. Now, at first glance, this seems like a, oh my god, what the hell are they doing kind of thing, but I've been thinking about it, and I think this is actually probably the best way to go about doing shield. It is more of like a big, bulky, protective plate armor now, as opposed to the old well, shield? I guess? I don't really know how else to describe it. But yeah, the, the whole plate armor thing does definitely seem very fitting. Which, as a little aside, is something I've always wanted in Robocraft. Not necessarily as a change up to the electro shields, but more of a standalone thing. So the main thing you need to know here are that they are staying pretty much the same. There isn't really any massive overhaul change other than the fact that their shield health is now being changed to armor health. Presumably they're still going to have the drain effect the more damage they take. I don't see why they wouldn't. But overall, this is a buff to Electroplate because they can now be healed by your auto regen as well as, and most importantly, healed by the brand new and improved Nano Disruptors, which is definitely a very, very good thing because a lot of people have wanted the ability to heal Electroplates, and now you can. Again, I have to reiterate here, this is pretty much the same electroplates we know and love. It's just improved, really. And improved in a very simple way, very straightforward way. Which I personally don't mind, honestly. I have an insectoid that I've been trying to build for about two years now, and it's just not worked out, because electroplates weren't very good, and I've wanted to have a ton of electroplates on this thing. But, of course, you couldn't heal electroplates, and if the majority of your body is something that can't be healed, that's a bit of a problem. And as well, you know, insect legs kind of sucked for a long time. But now they're good, and now electroplates are going to be good, hopefully. At least on paper, they seem good, because we also have overall health buffs. 
two electric plates, as well as some nerfs. So one of the current kings of the meta right now is the Electroplate Sausage, which uses the size 1 and size 2 Electroplates, the very smallest ones. Well, sad to say to Sausage users, but those are being rather massively nerfed. Now the amount of health to CPU is exactly proportional to that of a cube. So all Electroplates with a single connection point, which is the majority of them, will now have 2,100 health per CPU. And the multi-connection plates, aka the mega plates, have a HP to CPU ratio of 1,470. So the super quick rundown of what you need to know as far as buffs and nerfs, every shield that is E or lower, so the base A, B, C, D, and E variants, all have had their total HP nerfed, some more than others. The closer you get to the base variant, the larger the nerf is. But the F, G, H, I, J, and K variants have all had their overall health buffed. And the closer you get to the I variant, as far as the normal shields go, the larger the buff is. As well, the Mega Plates have also had a substantial buff. Now they nearly have 200,000 health, which will be a pretty damn beefy shield. It'll take about three rail shots to kill it. Though we also have something coming up for rail as well, but I'll get into that in a little bit. The Mech Legs have also gotten a similar treatment to the Electro Plates. Now, all of the Electroplate health has gone into physical armor, so total HP. Though I have seen some confusion, at least by the wording that they have in the article, because they say the health value for the mech legs have multiplied by four, which I saw some people freaking out about. But remember, their armor was very low, but their shield health was very high, and the shield health was actually three-fourths of their total health. So all they're doing here is combining their armor and their their shield into one number. That's all they're doing. So the total health is staying the same, essentially. Modules have also been changed. This is something I talked about a few videos back. This is a lowering of the total CPU for all modules. Well, all of them except for the Blink, because FreeJam seems to have it out for Blink right now. They really, really want to nerf that thing into the ground for some reason. The other thing to remember here, all modules except for the Ghost now cost zero power to use. And speaking of the Ghost module, we have a CPU reduction of 50. So it is now 255 CPU load. The Disk Shield is now 225 CPU load, which is a 70 reduction. EMP is now 195, which is a whopping 120 reduction. And the biggest buff that this thing could have ever gotten was a CPU drop, and it got it in the form of a 125 CPU reduction, which now puts the energy module at 165 CPU. As you know, the biggest problem with the weapon energy module was the fact that you were draining your power just installing it, and it is a module that gives you more power, but with a high cooldown. So this massive reduction should solve most of the problems with it. It's gonna be interesting to see how how many people will be using this in the future? And funnily enough, the Windowmaker also got a reduction, but only a 15 CPU reduction. It is now 135. Like I said, the Blink stays the same, but it has had a increase to its cooldown, which is now a total minute. It used to be 50 seconds, although previous to that it was even lower. But yes, it is now 60 seconds to recharge this thing, which I'm not really that that happy about. It was already kind of iffy as far as the nerf went. The 50 seconds was a little bit too much, and now I think this might be overdoing it personally, but what do you guys think? Quickly finishing this up, we come to the weapon reworks, and all rails, including the biggest and smallest 
Alchemist will be getting their damage increased by 20%. And all of the following buffs, by the way, have been done to, quote, make all weapons feel more useful in battle. The plasmas have been changed, not damage-wise, but splash radius-wise. So all plasma, except for the Goliathon, will have their explosion radius increased to a flat 25 meters across the board. This is to match the Goliathon's blast radius. Presumably this is done to help bombers take out hovercraft. Because if you use anything other than Mega Plasma, you were kind of having a pretty difficult time trying to hit those things. So this should hopefully help a little bit. Although it will be kind of funny seeing the pulsers fire out massive blasts, but uh, I don't know. It's for balance reasons, so hopefully it's a good thing. Anyway, all lasers, except for the Leviathan and Disintegrator, have had their accuracy increased. So the big lasers are still more accurate than the smaller lasers, but the difference in accuracy between the Leviathan and Wasp is now only 25%, as opposed to a 100% difference in accuracy, as it was previously. And last but not least, we have the Tesla Slicer, and Tesla Ripper getting a damage increase. And a pretty decent one at that. So will those two see the light of day? Probably not, but uh, I don't know, worth testing out, I guess. Let me know how you think of them when the update drops. So that will do it for this episode. Let me know what you think of all of this in the comment section down below. I, of course, have been the Awesome Soul. I thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.